all of that DSLR camera gear has actually been sitting in storage for about a year and a half now because I've switched from DSLRs to this, the Sony RX100. Hit it! That's what I'm talking about! Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. Hit it, boy. I'm packing up to go to Europe again, and this time it's more of a health expedition. Every time I've been to Europe, my illness has been a lot better, so this time I'm going to try to go for a month and see if I can handle living there for a month. So I thought it was a perfect time to explain why I've switched from the DSLR to the Sony RX100. It's not really about the cameras, it's more about sharing my thought process about how to customize your camera gear and your camera to your own lifestyle. Because for me, my illness makes me very weak, so carrying around so much DSLR gear just really wears me down. By the time I get to the shoe location, sometimes I'm too tired to shoot correctly or think properly. And even just for people who are traveling, if you're walking around town and sightseeing or hiking up hills, if you're carrying around camera gear that weighs almost as much as you do, it's just gonna wear you out and it's gonna kind of take the fun out of traveling. I guess this isn't a very smart vlog because usually people talk about new gear and try to like get you to buy stuff so that they can make commissions off of you buying camera gear and cameras through the link in their uh, YouTube description. This is kind of the reverse of that. But I just wanted all of you to start thinking creatively about how to customize your gear so that everything is optimized and you won't be carrying around extra stuff that you don't need and just spend more and more money on stuff that just end up collecting dust. So this is kind of how I transitioned from the Canon 7D to the Sony RX100. First of all, I needed a camera that could achieve similar results to a DSLR so I can still shoot production stuff if I needed to or if I'm running and gunning and I have to switch back to the Canon 7D. It's not really about the equipment, it's more about the lighting, then the composition, and the story you're trying to tell. So if you got all of that, the camera stuff doesn't matter as much. And if you set it up correctly, people can't really tell, especially if you're shooting for the digital age, people are watching on their laptops. And if they're watching on their phones, they're not really gonna see the difference between a small sensor like this and a larger sensor like this. So when you're building your gear, you're building it around the camera and DSLRs are just so heavy. And because the camera is heavy, all the gear around it is heavy. You just need stronger and heavier tripods and lenses to attach onto a heavy camera like a DSLR. And so everything just compounds, it gets heavier and heavier. Like each gear you buy is gonna, just gonna be so heavy. Even the batteries are heavy. And like Chase Jarvis says, the best camera is the one you have on you. So if you're traveling to places and the camera is just too heavy to carry with you, like for me, or if you're going through customs or if you just forget to bring it to a party and then you, you see an amazing moment there and you just don't have your super nice DSLR camera and lenses to capture that moment, or if you just have to take out all this bulky stuff and set it up just so you can get the image or the video, then you're gonna miss the moment. So the Sony RX100 or some of these smaller mirrorless cameras you can fit inside your backpack or like the Sony RX100 you can fit inside your pocket. So next let's talk about lenses. On this Canon 70 I have a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens so I can do wide shots, I can zoom in for nicer portrait shots and it's a f2.8 so that means I can open up the aperture pretty wide and it can shoot better in low light. However, uh, for the Sony RX100, this one is also a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. So I can also zoom with this one. And this one uh, has a maximum aperture of f1.8, so it can shoot even better in low light. It can let in even more light. So whatever I can shoot on the DSLR, I can shoot on the Sony. Obviously the sensor size matters, so you're not gonna get the exact same quality. This Sony can also shoot in 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second, and up to 960 frames per second. So it can go super, super, super slow, which is awesome. Next, let's talk about lighting. Lighting, like I said, is super important for any photo or video, but is even more important for video because you can't edit videos like you do with photos in Photoshop where you can change the lightings around, you can cut pieces here and there, make the lighting 
and look the way you want, just a lot harder. So when you're shooting video, you want the lighting to be as close to perfect and as close to what you want in the final product as possible. And so usually you need extra lighting gear, whether if it's a reflector or like an LED light like this, that gives it constant lighting because you're not gonna be using flashes in a video. So that's extra gear. And instead for the Sony RX100, I'm using this little guy as a loom cube. It's this tiny little thing that fits in your pocket. It does flash and it does constant lighting. So this constant lighting is for video. It has 10 levels of brightness and it fits inside your pocket. And it also comes with these amazing uh, color filters. So you can make the light yellow or bluish and it attaches with a magnet. Next, I was thinking about stability. Usually you want steady shots so people don't get dizzy or the footage doesn't look horrible. With a heavier camera like a DSLR, you need a very strong and heavy tripod. I was using this guy, which is the Manfrotto 055. And this thing is pretty, pretty heavy. I showed up to an engagement shoot once and the groom, he's a Marine. And he told me like they use this exact same Manfrotto model to put their guns on. So that's a pretty heavy tripod and you want that for a DSLR because you're gonna be putting, like I said, maybe like light on there. And then you're gonna put other camera gear like a voice recorder and maybe a monitor. So it just gets heavier and heavier. It's not just the camera that you're putting on there. However, with this Sony RX100, I can just use this handheld uh, Joby Gorillapod and this fits inside my backpack or my sling bag. And then when you're going for a more handheld look, usually for a DSLR, you want a rig like this. You stabilize it on your shoulder so there's some movement, but it's steady enough that the footage is watchable. So I learned with this smaller camera, usually the disadvantage is it's lighter and the lighter the camera, the less stable it is. It's easier for your hand to twitch and just move the camera around. But if you use this method of uh, using the neck strap and to stabilize it and your arms against your body, you can do a pretty good job of trying to mimic the effects of the shoulder rig and try to and get similar footage. Again, it's not gonna be exactly the same, but it's gonna be similar enough that people can't really tell the difference unless they're seeing the footage side by side. Next, let's talk about movement. I love movement in shots. So that's kind of the reason for video instead of photos is to get, kind of get some movements and use that to generate emotion and tell the story. So with DSLRs, a lot of times you'll see people setting up with a slider. You'll slide this guy back and forth with the camera on it and it'll just do nice smooth and steady shots moving sideways or back and forth like this. Or you would go with a steady cam and steady cams, I used to have one, I used it a lot, but it's just so heavy, it's not really practical. With the camera like this, that's already about seven pounds and you add on maybe like another four pounds for the steady cam itself, you're carrying around 10 or 11 pounds, all goes to this wrist on the hand where you're carrying the steady cam. So you have to get your steady cam shots really fast or it's gonna wear you out. To replace the slider and the steady cam, I've gone with a, a Z and gimbal. This is an old uh, version one, but it still works great for me. I can attach the Sony RX100 or even this large DSLR on it and it'll barely handle it, but it will handle it. So this gimbal fits inside my backpack. I can hold it with one hand and I can hold it all day. Finally, what I really love about the Sony RX100 is the flip screen. And it can flip to different degrees. So if you're shooting even at lower angles, you'll be able to see what's in frame and what's out of frame. And uh, I know there are some Canons that have the flip screen, so those would be better. But if you don't have a flip screen DSLR, then you're gonna need another monitor to go along with your gear. And it's just extra weight and it's bulky and it's extra stuff you have to charge up every time. So the amount of gear and the amount of weight you have just compounds for each little thing that you need. So yeah, this is what my gear looks like now. It's just this guy and a bendy tripod and a loom cube and maybe, maybe the gimbal if I'm shooting some movement stuff and that's it. So yeah, I hope this video inspired you guys to kind of change your gear around and try to optimize your gear for what you're trying to do. Obviously, each situation is different and I do have all this other DSLR gear still around in case I have specific shoots where I need 
certain sliders or I need certain lighting equipment. But for 90% of the stuff I'm shooting now, whether if it's vlogs, whether if it's traveling stuff, whether if it's for production, whether if it's for film, I'm actually using the Sony RX100. And with the right editing techniques, well, which I'll talk about in a future video, you can get very nice results from the Sony or similar smaller cameras. So yeah, you guys, thanks for supporting my channel. Remember to subscribe and like and share. It really does make a huge difference in helping me grow my channel and be able to do more of this. And if you guys have any more ideas you want me to talk about, hit me up on Instagram at Jeffrey Lynn underscore and follow me on my Europe trip. I would love to meet up with you guys if some of you guys are over there. Oh, and by the way, this whole episode is filmed on my iPhone because obviously I have my Sony RX100 right here and have my Canon 70 right here. So I need another camera. So if this video looks good. I'll do a tutorial about how I did this whole setup.